we may never know. By the time they were able to train more instruments on it, the signal had vanished. It remains unexplained. One sniff of success in 35 years of searching might be enough to put you off. But Seth Shostak is undaunted. If we do this for 100 years and we don't find a signal, I, I, I would be nonplussed. I'm also going to be dead. But I mean, I, that would truly surprise me. So I think that this, in some ways, this experiment is in, in, almost guaranteed to succeed. But despite Seth's optimism, finding extraterrestrials could take some time. There are just too many stars for us to search. The problem is, our galaxy is truly immense. This is us just here. That star is the sun. And this is the area we've searched so far for alien signals. Not bad, until you see just how many stars there are to search. With so many stars out there, finding extraterrestrial beings might seem like a daunting task, but the search may not be in vain. We've started to find the places where they could live. Hawaii. Far above the clouds of Big Island sits the largest telescope in the world. Scientists come here to search for something that until recently they believed was impossible. Evidence of planets circling around distant stars. What object would you like to go to next, guys? Uh, we'll continue stepping down 9331. All right, lining up on slit. We are ready for exposure. And shooting. At first glance, their task seems hopeless. Finding a planet around another star is the equivalent of detecting a single grain of sand on the moon. But there's a trick to it. Don't even look for the planet. Just look at the star. Jeff Marcy is one of a new breed of scientists, a planet hunter. If there's a planet going around a star, we look up with our telescopes, you'll never see the planet lost in the glare of the host star. What we do is we watch the star itself and we look to see if the star wobbles in space. It's very much like a hammer thrower. As the hammer thrower wheels this huge mass around his head, the hammer thrower wobbles around being pulled by the hammer. And so even if you couldn't see the hammer itself, you'd be able to tell that that hammer thrower had a large mass at the end of some large rope. So you can tell a lot about the planets going around a star by just watching the star itself. The idea that you can detect a planet by the minuscule wobble it creates in a star is frankly astonishing. Small wonder that success was a long time coming. We started our planet search way back in 1986. And we went for nine years without finding anything. And then in 1995, we started finding some. And now we're finding planets so fast, we can barely keep up with them. Every month, we find another two or three planets. It's like we feel like we have to stuff the planets in our mouths to just, you know, pretend that we're keeping up when in fact we're not. There's almost no question that there are literally hundreds of billions of planets just in our own Milky Way galaxy, many of which could, of course, harbor life. One by one, astronomers were finding alien worlds.
but their hopes of finding alien beings soon faded. Every world they've discovered appears utterly lifeless. These are gas giants, planets with no solid surface at all for life to live on. And most of them are so close to their stars that the heat would be lethal. To find worlds where aliens could live, they'll need a whole new approach. And this could be it. A fleet of orbiting telescopes flying in laser-guided formation. Each is many times more powerful than the Hubble Space Telescope. When they're launched in 2025, the telescopes won't be looking for the subtle wobble of a star. They'll look straight at the planet itself. They'll analyze its atmosphere, perhaps even tell us if there's life. One day, we'll be able to look out into space and see other worlds like ours. I think for almost any human being, the picture of another Earth orbiting another star would be like looking in the mirror but not the mirror that you see in the morning. This would be a mirror showing our whole solar system, in effect, and our beloved planet Earth. Seeing it mirrored in another star, I think, would be one of the most heartwarming and exciting days of anybody's life. It is an astonishing prospect. But if we're looking for alien life, finding another planet so much like our own may not actually be necessary. Our planet has everything life needs. Air, water, even sunlight if you're lucky. Conditions here are just right for us. But who's to say alien life would thrive on the same things? What if it doesn't need sunlight or air to exist? Three kilometers down in the ocean lies one of the harshest environments we know. This is a volcanic vent. The temperature here is over 100 degrees. There's total darkness, pressures that would crush a human to a pulp. These creatures should literally be cooked. But here they are. If living things can thrive here, then where else? Scientists' quests for new life forms have led them to some of the most hostile environments imaginable. This cave is the relic of a vast volcanic eruption that occurred millions of years ago. It's a lava tube a gully left behind by a river of molten rock, sterilized by the heat. When the rock solidified, the tube was sealed off from the world. There's nothing here to live on, no sunlight, nothing but rock. This truly is another world. Penny Boston is a specialist in finding life where it shouldn't exist. The most important thing about looking for life on other planets is to keep your imagination as broad as you possibly can and try not to go in with preconceived notions because you never know what you might find. We can only base it on our best guesses depending on what we find here on Earth.
If Penny's team finds life here, it is surviving conditions we used to claim were impossible. And if life can survive impossible conditions on Earth, why not on other worlds? And this is the first place to look, Mars. Like the caves on Earth, there's little here for life. Not much water or air, nothing but rock to live on. 